Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. This tutorial is for everyone who wants to start speedrunning Metal Gear Solid on PC. We are going to go through all the various versions of Metal Gear Solid for PC that you can play on modern PCs. We're going to go through the community-made launcher that enables us for more stability and I'm going to show you all its features. And then last but not least, I will quickly go over how to use your controllers correctly with this PC port as it is a little bit tricky and has some prerequisites to put it slightly. Let's begin. First off, the most easy way to get the game legally is to either have a disc and patch it out or just directly buy it from GOG or good old games. Currently, you can buy this game for just 10 euros in the European market or probably roughly $10 as well. And you will get a download as such. The game will be just here and everything should be working. Juji has put in a lot of work to make it work just standard with modern controllers, such as also an Xbox Series controller and a DualSense. But we will take this also a little bit further later when we talk about the community launcher. Another way how you can get this game is via the Reddit patch. Reddit community user Oxide-NL has made a patch so the disc version of the game works also on modern PCs. And well, it helps also that the game apparently was delivered with a full set of files. Of course, I'm not going to show you how to get this, but you can probably Google for yourself how to get Metal Gear Solid PC Reddit version. And last but not least, what we want next to the game is the Community Made Launcher by BMN. This launcher can be downloaded for free on this website, linked in the description down below. It is used by all of the speedrunners and it is safe to be used. This launcher enables you to have configs, save files being prepared, fix the music and much more. It will also allow you to set CPU core affinity so the game does not crash after skipping a lot of cutscenes, which unfortunately it does often if you don't fix that particular error. So let's take a look and download it and put it all together. Just click here in the launcher and you're good to go. All right, so I located where Medical Solid has been installed. This is the game folder as downloaded directly from GOG. If you want to work with the Reddit version, it will work the exact same way. Just open the folder where the game is located and these are all the files. You can start the regular game Medical Solid via the mgsi.exe or Medical Solid VR via the MGS vr.exe. What helps is having the community launcher. I just downloaded the zip file from the website that I just showed you. Just open it up with WinRAR or just with the basic Windows opening tool, which is literally just the Explorer. You don't need to install a program just to open zip files. Mark all of these files and put them in the folder as you can see here. There we go. Now you can close this and delete the file. You do not need this anymore. You maybe want to right click the MGSI launcher.exe file, make a shortcut. The shortcut you can take and just drag over to your desktop if you want. You can even rename it to just MGS. And then you can basically close the entire game folder here. And then it's time to actually jump into the launcher and show you what it all means. I have a click here, mgsilauncher.exe, or just launch the shortcut that we have here. All right, let's take a very detailed look at all the options that you can see here in the launcher. If you launch this program and it has the GOG version detected, you can open actually here, GOG video config settings. As you can see here, these settings allow you to set the game into windowed mode, for example, and scale it even. So the game can actually be bigger than what's originally intended, 640 by 480 resolution. You can also just change that here and say inside, for example, the resolution should be 1440 times 1080. On a standard HD monitor, different Defined by 1920 times 1080p pixels, this would fill the screen from top to bottom and leaving only to the left and the right some open space, but it will be also correctly in 4x3 format like that. 
important is on the left side, we have the process section. This whole area here, as you can see, has all my CPU cores. It starts counting from zero. That's what programmers do. You want to click at least one, hold down the shift key and press at least one more core. The reason for this is that Medical Solid on PC developed in 2000 was not made for both skipping cutscenes often and also not for using more than one core. Because PCs back in the day were barely having more than one core. Thankfully, this has changed now in recent days and we can have as many as we want. I personally use an Intel i7 Teven 700K. For that, I found having core zero up to three selected works best. So it means it uses four cores and then can have its load separated over the few CPUs. Doesn't even need that much. It can be that your CPU needs less cores or even more selected. So make sure to check out our Metal Gear Speedrunners wiki where we have a list compiled of all our combined experiences with different CPUs, which setting works best for you. In the beginning, if the CPU is not listed, I would always recommend starting with at least four cores and see if that works. I can show you later what the best site is once we get into the game. One more thing you maybe want to do is also apply profiles or even these extras. They are not necessary, but they can come with different applications. For the initial start, I would recommend just leave these extras alone and see that the game launches correctly for you. This icon opens the patch installer. You want to actually, you want to first back up all the files, which you can do with just one button press. Then there's a different version of the patch where you can have the mouse cursor not being captured in the game, which is rather useful. If the game's open and you move your mouse down or up, it will actually move in the menu, which can be distracting. We play this game on gamepads, or maybe if you want on keyboard, it is not recommended though. Most of the people will play on the gamepad. What you actually want is to download the new music, which you can just do with one button press here, and then unpack it, and then you can actually select the music patch here from this list. Click music patch, and then patch. There we go. Now that we see the text message patched here, we know that the new music has been implemented. For historical reasons, this game was ported by a very small team, which was not given the official music from Medical Solid, and instead they had to resort to fan pages downloading the music there. That leads to some not good music in quality being used, and also wrong music being used at times. So there's a few things that are missing. This patch already makes the music much better. When first launched in the game, you will hopefully see everything being in fact. CPU cores being selected here, which have been faded out, can go like this. The resolution being changed already to a higher resolution. I can show you how the difference is. Before you click launch, just click save config for launcher once. That will make sure that all your CPU selected and all the settings that are here will be also loaded next time when you open the launcher. All right, let's launch the game, see what happens. Okay, guys, one slight correction before we launch the game. If you launch it the first time, do not set the check mark for restore settings. You first want to launch the game, go into the GPU settings and change it to software mode, then close it. After closing, you set all the settings here, including the graphics settings, which is just windowed, and then you click backup. Now all your settings with the graphics have been set and you can check the restore settings on launch. So all these settings are always applied when launching the game. As you can see, the game does not launch in window mode, as I alluded earlier. The game per standard loads into full screen. Just hit enter on your keyboard or escape. And let's take a look at the settings. There's a very key aspect here, which you want to change if you want to run Medical Solid. You don't want to go to options, video sound options, and then go down with the arrow keys on your keyboard to advanced. Here, you want to change from primary display driver or voodoo card wrapper in the Reddit version over to software. What is the difference? The right choice, no matter what it's named, will have the game render on your GPU. 
if you have a very, very weak CPU, which some laptops maybe have, I have a laptop where this doesn't work, you maybe want to run this game on the GPU. Usually though, especially on just proper tower PCs, the CPU is strong enough that it will run fine on software rendering mode. That means that not the GPU, your graphics card, is putting out the video, but actually the CPU takes care of making the game work. This change actually makes it so that rooms load faster. It makes a few seconds difference over the course of the run. I just want to repeat again, if your laptop, for example, or another device that you run on does not work well with software, that's now what you need to test a little bit, you maybe want to switch again to the GPU resolution. Some people just fancy it anyway because they think it looks better. For speedrunners, for sure, you want to make sure you're on software that is the fastest setting. Software renderer is always in 640x480p, which will look very small, but for that we have the launcher to fix that. You maybe want to turn off the water ninja effect, leave it on for now and see if it still keeps working for you. Let's go back and then confirm this save screen. We are back now, the game loads, and as you can see, the menu looks already a bit different, a bit more crisp. That is now because the game has actually been loaded more accurately on a CPU than on a GPU. Let's take a look again here. Graphics brightness is fine, captions are on, awesome. Some people like to turn down the music just a little bit, that's up to you. And then in the advanced options we can see, yes, software mode is here. And all the settings we have done are here. Wonderful. Let's move out first before we go to the controller and go back to the launcher quickly. All right, we are back inside the launcher again. And now we can actually select the GOG video config. As you can see here, we have different options that make the game work different in certain aspects. What we want to see are a few things that I recommend to you personally. If you run the GOG version, you probably want to run it in windowed mode. It has many advantages, especially because you can tap out of the game. If you want to stream it, for example, it's much easier to deal with and you're not bound to the ready version, which can only be really played in. And you're not bound to the Reddit version's limitations, which can only be actually run in full screen mode on the software renderer. On GOG though, you can select certain aspect ratios and of course frequencies here, which do not matter. My monitor can go up to 280 Hertz, but the game will always run at roughly 30 FPS. What you want to use here is up to you. I will actually not change anything. Same with the presentation here. You want to change to window. This is a setting that actually is worth it. And you want to change nothing aspect ratio correction, nothing the scaling here, virtual synchronization or V-Sync, don't need to touch, and gamma correction is just for the brightness. If you think the game is too dark or too bright, you can change it here. Lastly, we have some enhancements, which are smoothing out. I never touch these settings as well. If you want to use them, they are only really useful in the GPU mode, not in the software mode. The software mode also looks actually more accurate to the console version. Just click save here and exit. And now we're going to change here from no change to inside. Input the values if you haven't yet. And then if I zoom out to the full screen version again and then launch the game, of course, after clicking save config for launcher first, we should have the game run in windowed mode in 1440 times 1080p, filling out the whole monitor that we have, but also running in smooth 30 FPS and also loading the fastest because we are using the software version for the renderer. All right, here we are again. Now that we have all the settings done, we can just launch game and it should be opening in windowed mode in the 1440 times 1080 resolution. There you go. As you can see, the game's now not just in 640 by 480, but also filling up the screen uh, to the size of your monitor. Of course, if your monitor is bigger than 1920 by 1080, you want to have a different aspect ratio just to have it scale up bigger. 
And again, just to confirm in options, video sound options, there you can see rendering devices software. The menu, weirdly enough, here is off. I don't know how to fix that, but usually I don't touch these settings anymore at all. The only thing I do is maybe turn on the music volume and that's it. If you want to load the game at any point and practice, this launcher also comes with its own set of save files that you can use. Just go to Open Save Game Manager and now you can make your own profile. I've already made a lot of profiles. As you can see, a lot of profiles, which are for different practice reasons. Your launcher will not have these profiles. Your launcher will just come with a standard profile. Let's make a new one and basically have it so you get all the saves you need for an any percent easy run with high alerts. Why high alerts? That's a thing about the speedrun strat lately. Um, just deal with it and play along. High alerts are important. Just go to the plus icon here. Give your profile a name. Call it, for example, any percent easy. So you know that you can find it back again. Now that we've created it, there's a new profile here. And now we need to put all the saves in here. Now on the left side, you have the available saves and your current profile. Now, what you want to do is go to the drop down segment here. Once again, let me just pull it up a little. Go to the drop down segment here and go to the one where it says any percent alerts high. Click that and you can see oh, your splits have changed. Now, what we see is also the very easy difficulty settings. We want to go, for example, to extreme or easy. I mean, we said it easy, so let's go to easy. Now, all the saves that you have on the left side here are the any percent saves with high alerts and on the easy difficulty. Now, you want to make them actually available on this profile. So when you launch the game, all the saves that we have here will be in the game. For that, we need to select all of them and move them over. So click heliport, go down here, hold shift on your keyboard and then left click. That way you select all of these saves. You can go back up again and see all of them are marked blue, so it's all of them selected. Now, just go to the plus icon here. And there we go. All these are now on your current profile. As you can see, these are not included here because if I change the value to All Wolf 2 and go back to the one that I have made, and they're actually still here, so you don't even need to save them. I got tricked. Ha ha. Just to make sure you can apply and save these settings. So they are actually now in your save game folder. And if you want to double confirm, you can go to this button here to show you where these saves are. If you want to see if these saves are actually in your save game folder, just go to this left icon here and open it. As you can see in this newly opened window, there's all these different saves that come from the launcher itself. They will be bundled in these folders. And then the one that's actually in your Metega Solid and Safe Game folder, these are the ones that you can then launch inside the game. They'll all be named, of course, respectively, so you know what you have. Any percentage to category, alerts mean they are on high alert saves, easy means the difficulty, and then the rest is the name of the location where you will load in. All good. Well, let's just close this and launch the game and see all of saves in one place. Hit escape again here, go down, load game, and you can see, ah, oh, there's all of saves already. So you do not need to make your own ones, but you have them all here. Now let's actually take a look at the controls. All right, for this next tutorial part, we will actually bind the controller so we can use it in the game. And I will also show you what happens if you don't do a little fix later down the road. So let's go to the options, controller options, and then we can see all these fine buttons. On the left side, we have the keyboard binds, and on the right side, we have the controller binds. Now watch on screen what I press, and then you can just follow along. So I hit enter on the keyboard first, so I can have these options blue. And if I press a controller button, the right side should change. So if first person view is button three, which doesn't tell me anything, I would just click now Y on my Xbox controller. Never mind, you see your dual sense. 
And you can see it's still free. Cool. Weapon is square or X on an Xbox 360 controller. Still works. Action is, of course, B or circle. And crawl is A or X. Switch item, of course. So when you press button six, inventory items is, ah, there you can see button four was just changed. And then switch weapon, you hold the right trigger and inventory weapon, the right bumper. Select radio, of course, is the select button on the left. As you can see here, blinking. And then we have menu pause on the right. All good. Move left then is holding left, move right is right, move up is up, and move down is down on the D-pad. There you go. Now you can actually control the entire game just inside there. As you can see now that I press the buttons on my gamepad, again, currently using a Xbox uh, controller, you can see that it loads. Let's go into a game safe and see if it actually works. So if I go into load game, I need to confirm with B. Move down to Kenya, for example. And there we go, this is the game. So let's walk right, works, walk left, works, walk up, works, walk down, works. Let's move up right. Okay, so that works. Move down left. Hey, that also works. Move up left. That works. And go back, move down right. This is thanks to GOG having implemented a newer fix of the game. It used to be that this game was not working with the D-pad properly and to had to use your right analog stick as an input. So speedrunners had to actually go in and change settings so the D-pad, when you pressed it physically, would actually output analog stick inputs. And only then, if you have actually analog inputs being sent to the game, the game would allow you to walk all these nice directions, left, right, down, and all the rest, and of course all the combinations. This has been fixed now by GOG, thank you. If you are on the Reddit version of the game, you still need to do this fix. Additionally, we can also see our X or A is working, Snake's crouching, on circle is punching. If I'll throw here with square or just X, does throw indeed the weapon. And if I hold up Y or triangle, he actually looks down here. To the buttons, if we press the bumper, left one opens the menu. The right one opens the weapons. So it's not what we want. And if we click the triggers here, it actually functions. So it's actually inverted from what we want. Let's go back down here again, control options and change it. So switch item is actually the bumper. If I've that wrong, inventory items is the trigger. Switch weapon is the bumper and inventory weapon is the trigger. And now if you continue, if I hold the right trigger, there we go, that's the menu. Left trigger is the menu. The right bumper unequips or re-equips the weapon. And the left trigger equips or re-equips the item. Perfect. That is for the GOG version and for the latest one at that. Let's see how Reddit does it. Reddit is a bit different. All right, here we have a look at the Reddit version of the game. You can test the Reddit version because in the mode, it does not talk about the GOG configs. And also it is set to exclusive full screen. The options here really come only with free sets and Reddit only really works in software render mode in the full screen version. Let's launch this version of the game and use the exact same uh, gamepad that we had for Xbox Series controller and bind that to the game and see if there's any issues. All right, welcome to the Reddit version of the game. As you can see, this game launches in full screen mode, just as we have defined it earlier. If you go to options, video sound, and then advanced, you can see here that the graphics card output was renamed here to DG Voodoo Direct X Wrapper. Same thing in the end, it means that the game renders on your graphics card. Of course, this wants to be on software, 64480. Reddit version actually has two different modes. Go with the high one, it's nicer. And if you want, you can leave on or off the ninja effect. Now here, we do the same thing. We go into the control options, and once again, setting the controls as you can see on screen. All right, so once again, we're going through here. 
with enter with enter i gonna press triangle changes this here to button three weapon i go here with square action i go with button one crawl is a switch item then is the left bumper inventory items is the left trigger switch weapon is the right bumper inventory weapon is the right trigger as you can see here select radio guns again is the left option button move left is here move right is there move up is here and move down is here menu pause of course is the start button let's apply this we've bound it one to one just like we did with the gog version and then we can exit let's start the exact same save here and see if it works now all right here we are we go right we go left we go up we go down we can crouch we can throw a grenade if you want we punch punch kick even go first person menu has been bound correctly and even the triggers work invert it another thing that reddit does it actually tells you one thing and uses the other so quickly go in again control options and then inventory items is actually the right trigger and inventory weapon is the left trigger but actually these will be flipped and if you press the left trigger you will open the menu and if you open the right trigger you will open your weapons as it should be and there we go right trigger get the weapons left trigger we got the items all right cool now another thing that we should expect is that the combined directions up and right or up left down left and down right will actually not work together so let's try that out aha as you can see i'm holding down right and snake does indeed not walk down right same with up left it just turns around up right and down left you can see that these individual directions are working but especially with the red version of the game the combined directions are not working this is the thing that i explained earlier where we need to rebind the controller so it actually works the thing that you can do right now is go to the control options and then go to the options here and then use the left stick so move left actually physically with your left move right with your right stick to the right move up with your sorry left stick up move down with your left stick down apply that and you can see yep he walks left he walks right he walks up and he walks down as you can see it also works in the diagonal directions according to the stick this is however not that precise in a game with eight wave movement usually you want to use there you go you want to use your d-pad actually so how does this work that we can rebind that our d-pad outputs the analog stick directions let's switch back to a different program quickly all right so outside of the latest version of GOG if you want to run the reddit version to have the game run in full screen which you need also for the very easy difficulty and some tricks there you need to have the ability to bind your gamepad to different inputs for example your d-pad needs to be bound to the inputs of the left analog stick there's also additional use if you want to do all bosses later because in the pc version of medical solid mantis will actually not accept attacks from you if you play on a gamepad usually you need to beat mantis by playing on the keyboard and we can circumvent that by having the square or attack key bound to the left control of your keyboard all this can be done for free if you have a dual shock 4 or a dual sense controller from playstation 4 or playstation 5 respectively the program that you need for these two type of controllers is Ryochan 7's DS4 Windows. Get the latest version and download it. You can basically extract it any way you want and then launch the program. This is a trusted program that everyone uses with a DualShock 4 or DualSense controller. And it looks like this. All right, here we go. I've launched the program and as you can see, I use a controller currently on my Windows that is a DualSense controller. You can connect this controller via Bluetooth, which I will not go into details here, 
You can find many articles on the internet how to connect your Xbox controller or your DualShock 4 or DualSense controller with your Windows PC via Bluetooth. Alternatively, you can also use a USB cable. What's coolest is if you have bound your controller via Bluetooth and then connected to a cable, the data will still go through Bluetooth, but it will also charge in the meantime your controller. This is important for Metal Solid on PC because if you for some reason, unplug your controller, the game will not react to anymore. You need to close it down and open it up again. And in a speed run, this means your run has failed and you need to reset. Coming back to the actual profiles here. This is DS4 Windows. Comes with controllers and profiles, even auto profiles, which I don't use. The only setting you really want to use is height DS4 controller. That makes it so your actual DualSense or DualShock 4 controller will not be seen anymore by the game. And I have loads of profiles here. Important are, of course, the ones here for Metal Solid 1 PC. All of these profiles basically have an Xbox 360 controller as its mask, meaning that Windows underneath thinks, oh, I have an Xbox 360 controller at my disposal. This is very helpful for many games, especially the older ones. And that's the first step to solve the issue with the 8-way movement. So if I go here, click a new profile, it gives us the option that we want to make a new profile. We want to select a preset. So we go, yes, give me a preset. And we're going to use an Xbox 360 controller here and apply. In the newly opened window here, you can see a DualShock 4 controller as an example, and you can click on all of these buttons here to change them. The key aspect we want to change for Medical Solid on PC are two things. As I explained earlier, you want to bind your D-pad, for example, to the analog stick. So right D-pad should be left axis plus. The left D-pad is a good stick here and so on. Up is up on the analog stick, down on the D-pad is down on the analog stick. So if I press now the D-pad on my physical controller, Windows will think, ah, you press the analog stick on an Xbox 360 control. One more thing we want to do as well, while we are here, as I explained for the all bosses category, Mantis demands for you to use the keyboard to fight him, but he only really checks for the attack key. So what we can do is basically for the entirety of the game, change so square is actually the left control. Additionally, what also helped, what I learned is, when you want to skip cutscenes, you can just hold down X. It works even better if you use a system key instead of a gamepad key. So we bind X here and bind it to the left shift. That way, square is left control, X is left shift, and the D-pad is now bound to the analog stick, the left one to be precise. Let's give it all a name, just call it MGSPC for example, and then save that. Again, all these profiles I've made here specifically for the different categories are all uploaded to speedrun.com. You can download them all for free there. They have additionally also for the higher strats, the actual analog sticks bound to number keys. Say for example, if I press up on the left analog stick, I can import a number. I will not go into the details why that is cool, but just know these weapon just know that these keys here, 1 to 9 and 0, are all mapped in Metal Solid PC to the weapons. And if you're on a higher level, you don't want to actually press the number on your keypad at some moments, you just want to use the analog sticks. Because the game plays basically with a D-pad and the face buttons, the analog sticks are unused. And speedrunners on higher levels use the analog sticks to instead press these number keys here for certain tricks. Again, this is outside of this tutorial, but just know that there's other stuff in here as well. If you download these extra profiles that you can get for free on the speedrun.com resources page. Of course, everything will again be linked down below. All right, we have now our MGS PC profile connected here. And then we can close the program and start Medical Solid and PC actually and see if that fixes our issue. All right, we're now back again in the Reddit version of Metric Solid, and we're just going to load into the same level again. And now let's see, actually, when I press the D-pad, that I have the full eight-way movement. So not just left, right, up and down, 
but also up right, bottom right, bottom left, and top left. Alright, we're back now in the PC version, Reddit, for Metal Gear Solid. And we saw already, you know, left, right, up and down works. And I didn't change anything from previously. There's still the left analog stick bound to this. So you can see I can actually press the left stick. Well, okay, you cannot see it. I'm physically pressing the left analog stick. My game input viewer is a bit modified already. But if I press upright on the D-pad, it didn't work before. Now we changed that the D-pad is actually using the left analog stick. And as we can see, even the diagonal directions are working. So now when we physically press the D-pad, we have all the eight directions we want, and especially the combined versions. This is now on the DualSense, and the same for DualShock 4 controller. What can we do if we are on an Xbox 360 or Xbox One or Xbox Series controller? We need to use a different program. All right, so we can use DS4 Windows by Ryochan 7 for DualShock 4 and DualSense controllers. Sadly, if you have an Xbox 360, Xbox One, or Xbox Series controller, you cannot use this program. It's really great, and if you can get a spare DualShock 4 DualSense, it will work with that. If you have one of those from Xbox, you sadly cannot use a free program, at least to my knowledge. There used to be this entry micro program, but currently, as it says here, Repo is unmaintained, cause not been updated for a while, and it's only updated in other versions. And the Windows version, of course, that most people want to use, is currently not working. People are actively searching, of course, for people that can help develop this. As you can see also, the latest release was in November 2016, so it's not guaranteed that your controller will work. Now that we've tried anti-micro and anti-micro X, and sadly both don't work, Let's give ReWASD a try. I'm gonna just go the free version and just give myself the demo. Gonna install that and then get ready. All right, this is ReWASD. I agree and install. And that program is actually nifty. I personally really like it despite not using it. I've tried it early already and it does the job well. And yeah, we need to restart the PC for that. So BRB. All right, we're back after the restart. Let's launch ReWASD. And directly on first start, we can see already here, loads of features have been done here. Adaptive triggers do something and yada, yada, yada. It just launches right away with a website. I don't like that necessarily. As it says here, the trial license has uh, 14 days till it stops working and again, it only in quotation marks cost six euro to use the basic version. So if there's no other way, you can always come back to ReWASD because that is definitely known to work with an Xbox style controller, be it from the 360, the one or the series console. So let's actually get to it and uh, make it work. So we have a keyboard here and we also have our gamepad here. As you see, nothing here is a bio. So what we want to do is we want to use the changes. So when you first launch the ReWSD, you're going to select your controller here. And then you want to go to the right straps here and change it. So you say what application it should fulfill. We want to switch this controller to an Xbox 360 controller. And then automatically fills it already with settings, as we can see here. There we go. I noticed the window was a bit squished. So all the buttons that we get from an Xbox Series controller have been mapped now to a standard Xbox 360 controller, which doesn't matter for us because we have actually a newer controller in our hands, but it is bound now the same way as it would be in every other way. Now we can actually change it. So the D-pad that we want to use is being used as the left analog stick. So just click here again, just as we got it from DS4 Windows, and we map it to another action. There's lots of actions here we can see. The one that we are, of course, interested in is not any of the keyboards, but actually a analog stick. For that, we have to go all the way down here until we get to the section here. These icons, as you can see, maybe not, uh, they are basically the analog sticks. There's an L and an R in there to indicate it's the left stick or the right stick. And we press left D-pad 
So we want the left analog stick to be pushed left. You can just basically click away and click the next icon, scroll down again until we reach the analog sticks and change it so it is the left stick to the right and the same with the rest. As you can maybe see here, the D-pad now is bound to the left analog stick. Great. The same thing that we did with Dewey's for Windows, we should also do here on the Xbox controller. So A is not bound to A, but actually to a keyboard that will be here, the left shift. So we scroll down until we see here, left shift, there we go. And X needs to be bound for the all bosses category to the left control. So we go down until we have left control, there we go. And that's it. Now all of that we can apply and have it in a slot one. Now the remap, as you can see in the bottom left, is on. And we switched to Xbox 360 for any controller that is connected here. Now we can actually minimize this and start MGS PC and hope that it works this time. So once again, we get down here and this time if you bind the controls and press the D-pad, it should actually show us that it doesn't change anything because the keyboard button is not being pressed and the controller should be the axis already. So move left and press on the D-pad right and it changes it X to up. That's fine. So I messed up, should have been left. But as you can see, actually, yeah, it does change it. So I messed it up by inputting it. But now for real, thanks to ReWASD, we can actually get the buttons that we want. So when I press the D-pad, it acts as if the controller has been pressed with the left analog stick. The same goes also for weapon and crawling. So if I press weapon here, instead of having a button on the right side, it will show as control to left. And the same with crawl, if I press A, it will show just umschal, which is a German word here. It's basically the left shift key. So there's no bound weapon to the right, and that's exactly how it should be. Go to apply, go to exit, and then we check it out, of course, in the game. We go to the canyon here. And then if I press the D-pad left, right works, up and down works, up right works, down left works. So you can see here, you can even explode yourself. Down left works and down top left works. I'll find all the mines right now. It will even work with the attacky. Remember, attack is not bound on the controller, but it works because it actually inputs the left control. What we also need to be Mantis. Mantis requires us to attack him with the left control key. It is meant to be as in use the keyword as input method because there's no player two here, but it really only checks for the left control. And as I press A, you can see we didn't have crouch bound. If you press shift that often, it can be that Windows will ask you like, hey, do you want to turn on sticky keys? Just go into the options and uncheck mark where it asks you. So it enables itself not anymore. Because every time when you press shift multiple times back to back, it will actually start asking you like, hey, do you want to have sticky keys? So just as a side note, and as you can see, it works. Actually, control is bound to control and num shot as we want it. And the D-pad is bound to the left analog stick whilst using the Reddit version and an Xbox controller. The same principle will also work in the GOG version. In the GOG version, when using an Xbox side controller, you still need to find a way to rebind the square key or, you know, on the Xbox controller, of course, it's X to have the attack key there. And that's all it is. In the latest GOG patch, the D-pad does not need to be fixed. It has already been fixed by GOG at least, so one point for them. On the Reddit version, you still need to do the whole thing. It doesn't matter what you do with a DualShock 4 or DualSense. Thankfully, DS4 Windows is free and you actually need to put that uh, fix down in all versions. DualSense do work now with the latest GOG version, but also there you need to use your attack key or square key as the actual keyboard key left control. So for using a DualShock 4 or DualSense controller, you still need to use for Windows, which is free. For Xbox controllers, the only way I know of is re WASD and then binding the problem there. Unfortunately, that program costs six euros in the base version, but thankfully that is not that much. All right, last but not least, now that we've seen the both versions of GOG and Reddit, I want to show you quickly what happens if you use 
read it in windowed mode. We just go to windowed here and launch the game that way. And it actually starts into windowed mode. But then this happens. So yeah, if you use the ready version, it has to be used in this window, in this full screen version, because window actually is broken. If you want to use Reddit in a window mode, you need to use the GPU version and restart the game. Now the game looks normal again. So if you want to use Reddit version in window, you have to use the GPU render method. But remember, this is the slower version. You will lose a couple of seconds actually when playing the game this way. It's up to you. The intended way usually is ready version, full screen software mode. And for GOG is windowed version and software mode. Both have their advantages and of course their downfalls, as we just explained with full screen, for example. But at least that way, now that you have everything set up properly with the community launcher, it should work mostly without crashes. Remember, all the things that I named in this tutorial here are in the video description down below. All the free links, of course, that are listed, they are not working yet. Listed down below, maybe in the future they will work again. And ReWSD as well, for those that have an Xbox controller, the 360 one or series, that way you also know how to get this to work, sadly, with a little bit of a price tag attached to it. And that has been it for me, for you today. Thank you so much for watching. So in conclusion, what you have all learned is how to download the Medical Solar PC version, how to implement the community launcher, how to fix the CPU core affinity so the game doesn't crash when skipping many cutscenes, and also how to use the safe pack, how to fix the music so you patch it out, and additionally also, of course, how to do further patches. And last but not least, you know how to set up your controller speed for a DualShock slash DualSense controller or an Xbox controller, so it actually is being used by the game well. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Hope this gives you a great start into speedrunning Medical Solid on PC. My name is House Test here for Medical Speedrunners. Of course, if you want to learn how to actually do the speedrun and go through the game as fast as possible, go to metalgearspeedrunners.com. We have a full wiki waiting for you to show you all the tricks and tutorials. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.